Hi, I'm Nate and you're watching Photo Learningism. So you want to work on your raw photos that you've just taken, but there's this noise problem. No matter what you do, there seems to be noise. I have this issue with my Nikon D5300. Even when I'm using best light, best conditions possible, there's still a little bit of noise. I think that's just in the light interpretation chip of my camera. So that's tough to get rid of unless you can work in a tool like raw therapy and make some adjustments into the raw image after the fact. So let's look at that and see what we can do. So I'm working in raw therapy version 5.8, which is a fantastic free open source tool that you can get, whether you're on Windows, whether you're on Linux, a wide audience there and wide range of compatibility. And what I'm looking at here, this is a picture I took and it may look good as it is, uh, I'm going to use the mouse roller and we're going to drill in a little bit and you can start to see the graininess that kind of gets captured here in the background. Uh, the closer I get, the easier it is to see. Um, so let's, let's work on that because <laughs> we can clean this up a little bit. And while you may not notice it while you're working on it on the computer or using it in these conditions, if you have the intention to use it for things like print, um, that tends to really intensify those kinds of imperfections and it becomes very necessary to work on that. So in raw therapy, it's very easy once you understand how things go. I'm going to focus on this area here because that's really kind of the, the focal point of this image. I'm going to drill in so we can get a good look at it. And then I'm going to hop over here to this second tab, the detail one, and we're going to roll down to the noise reduction space. So I'm going to walk through these so you can understand what these things do and get a good sense of how you can use these controls. So first thing you do is you flip it on. All right, that's good to do. Next thing here is the color space. This is a color interpretation model. Sometimes if you hover, by the way, it will try to explain it. Um, it does make its own recommendation there. I've always kept it on lab because that's a very friendly model for raw images. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, it does mention if you're not using a raw image, it will change it to RGB. Okay. The mode also, if you hover it, it will explain it. But really what's going on here is conservative will leave low frequencies intact and low frequencies are like the indigo, the violet, the blue. If you have a very dark, heavy image, this may be a value. If you had maybe left the exposure just a little bit too low um, or you had circumstances where it's very low frequency heavy, you might turn it up to aggressive to, uh, as they say in the description there, obliterate it. Um, but otherwise, I want to preserve every frequency because I want the full range of color to the degree possible. All right, leaving it a conserve. Gamma, this is going to be how aggressive in this case that we are going after the noise. So I want to be pretty aggressive. I see it there. I want to dial that up quite a bit um, and just work on that a lot. All right, for Luminance, this is the amount of um, light that passes through. Uh, the slider method I've always found to be the best one for me. You could do a curve approach where you can work on this on a grid if that's more your jam. Uh, but I like the slider approach because I can more easily just work number to slider and that makes sense to me. Um, so I'm going to put a lot of light detection in there. You can already see how it's already starting to work on that noise as I adjust the amount of light to work with and then the amount of detail I want to recover based on that light passing through we're going to pass that up quite a bit and you can see how this is really working on getting rid of that noise and making it less discernible to a very high degree All right next thing to look at is the chrominance okay now this is doing a kind of compare with the the um, this is uh, more of a recovery method in that to remove the noise, we're interpreting what should be there and we're comparing a value against what it should be translated to. So you could go automatic. That does a really well jo good job. You could also go manual, just got a good, good sense of what's happening. They do give you a, um, a curve down below, but um, I just found again, it's easier in this case uh, to work with the sliders and get the overall effect. Um, a lot of the, the color that I'm seeing right now is really in kind of that red, maybe a little bit of yellow space. So as we start to work on that, I don't want to play with it too much because then it starts getting those, those artifacts. So I'll dial that up a bit more. And the master is the overall adjustment for both those things. So 
I'll back out a minute here so you can see I'm not completely destroying the image as I go here. You can actually see it's getting very refined, very sharp. So going back in, and I'll turn it on and off for a second here so you can kind of see the progress that we're making. So turned off, you can see how it gets very grainy there again, and turn back on, it gets very clean, very crisp, all right? So a little bit more work to do here now. Rolling on down, we can work on the median of the chrominance. Um, so I'm gonna flip that on, and you can see how that got like super clear because that is now working within that. Uh, using a luminance approach, the amount of light passing through. And again, there's descriptions here. This is working in conjunction with that model again. Um, so this is a really good option, again, for tightening up and interpreting the color across. Three by three is good. Um, it gives you a description if you want to read through the finer things of how that translates to pixels. Uh, really, the smaller the grid, um, the smaller the pixel amounts that are being worked on at a time. So I'm going to keep it low. <laughs> Uh, and, and work in smaller blocks. And then it recommends putting it up to three iterations, which I think is good also, because I see good results when I stack up the number of passes, iterations of that pixel adjustment. All right, so that speaks to that. All right, so in a nutshell, that really covers what we're doing with the noise. You can see how that all got very refined, very clean. And if I back out, we can see that that is now very cleaned up. And if I were to print this, we can see that we're getting detail that we want. Now you may want to go back with a second pass on sharpening. That's kind of a whole other thing um, to get this a little bit refined. I want to focus on noise this pass, but this does really clean up the amount of noise that's in the picture and it makes it very smooth, very clean to the eye. I'll turn it back off one more time so you can see. It's a little bit more obvious the bigger it gets. Um, it's harder to see in a small picture, but turning it back on again, and we can see how that all just kind of fades in. So again, we do lose a little bit of sharpness doing this, so I would recommend going into the sharpness control, and I think we'll focus on that in another video. This is purely to focus in on the mechanics of how we get rid of noise. All right, so. I hope that was helpful. If this was, give me a thumbs up if you'd like to see more videos on working on raw images and raw therapy and programs like that. Um, also, subscribe if you haven't done that already and ask a question, leave a comment so we can grow stronger and learn together. I appreciate you watching this video and supporting this channel and I will see you at the next video.